In this lesson, I'm going to speak about the drawing application I use most often to create production storyboards, Sketchbook Pro. When I first started using Sketchbook Pro, it was owned by Autodesk. Currently, it is owned by Sketchbook Incorporated. You can download the application from Mac or Windows, and they have mobile versions too. It's not a subscription, it's a one-time fee to download it, and I believe it's $19.99 in US dollars. Pretty good for such a diverse and powerful application. I am running Sketchbook Pro on an, on an Apple iMac with operating system Sonoma 14.4.1, and in regards to my tablet, I'm using a 22-inch HD Wacom Cintiq Touch. I'm going to start off by doing a very quick sketch. This is sped up a bit, but we can see how I quickly sketch a frame that could be utilized in a commercial storyboard, and we can see the Sketchbook Pro user interface and how I typically set up my workspace. As we can see, I keep my brushes on my left. I have a custom set of brushes that I use most often, but even within this limited set of brushes, I would say I probably only use four or five of these brushes to complete 90% of the commercial storyboard work that I do. Here we can see the extensive amount of brushes that are available for Sketchbook Pro. Most of these are free to download. Many of these can be useful for specific effects or tasks, but to be honest, many of them are redundant, and I can say I have not had a practical use for many of them. But it's very nice to have them as options, and they are fun to experiment with. The most common brush that I use, without question, is the inking pen. I find it to be most similar to traditional inking implements. The taper is very realistic. I can control the size of the brush via the Properties tab, and also with the pressure sensitivity of my Wacom pen. The next brushes I use often are the erasers. Both the hard and soft erasers are, as would be expected, useful. Though I'd say I use the soft eraser most because, as we can see here, I can create subtle softening effects and opacity. Next up is the smudge brush. Like the soft eraser, I use this brush to create effects and to manipulate hard lines and edges. The airbrush is also useful. I use this for quickly adding soft tone. It's a great brush for basic rendering of organic subjects like people and environments. Of course, all of this is kept on a separate layer. The blur tool is also utilized to create depth effects and to diminish hard lines. As we can see, I have many more brushes in my palette, but for this lesson, I want to focus on the key brushes I use 90% of the time. Next, let's move over to the right to speak about the layers window. In order to create professional storyboards, you must use an application that has the layers feature. In addition, it's vital that you can export these layered files as Photoshop files, which, with Sketchbook Pro, you can most certainly do. As I click on and off some of these layers that I already created, you can see how keeping these layers separate can greatly aid you in your workflow. In addition to using an application that features layers in Photoshop exportation, the layering feature must have the ability to create layers transparently. This layer mode is often called Multiply in applications such as Photoshop, Procreate, and of course here in Sketchbook Pro. 
Next, we will move up to the top and view the toolbar. These arrows here give you the option to undo and redo. Of course, both are very useful. The magnifying glass zooms in and out, and also you can rotate the image with that tool. The Select tool I use often, especially the lasso. It's great for selecting an area of your drawing and cutting, copying, and pasting it so you can duplicate it or move it and resize it. This can save on drawing time. The Quick Transform tool is great for resizing and moving those specific selections. You can adjust the size, larger and smaller, and then of course you can also rotate the selection as needed. The Transform tool comes in handy when you have to skew or make something look like it's in perspective. It also has this feature where you can walk the selection a bit. The paint bucket tool is essential to quickly fill in areas. As we can see here, I can quickly fill in an entire layer with a dark gray and I can control its opacity on that layer. Most importantly though, when I switch that layer to multiply, I can see through it transparently. I especially like the gradation aspect of the paint bucket tool which I utilize often when creating skies and backgrounds. Here we can see how I can control the specific values of the gradation, and I can also easily add another value or color transition. The text tool is fairly basic. I use it for simple text, but when I need to do more complex text and designed text, I use other applications like InDesign, but it's fine for simple use. The ruler comes in handy for when you need to rule very specific, clean lines. It works very, very well. The symmetry tool is really wonderful. It can save a lot of drawing time. So for instance, if you're drawing a landscape, it can help you get a complete drawing quickly. And then after, you can add some asymmetry to make it more interesting.
Predictive stroke is terrific. You can play with the tolerance, but I like to keep it at 5. It's especially useful when you're drawing round or oval shapes quickly. As you can see, my line is kind of wobbly, but predictive stroke predicts what you are intending to do and cleans it up. This is also great for straight lines. Draw style or the shape tool is useful. You can quickly create squares and circles at different line weights. And that is an introduction to Sketchbook Pro and how I generally utilize it. Please like and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button for my newest videos.